Hello guys, welcome to Sergio's guitar lessons. I thank you for being here. And today's lesson is about chords and how to get more out of the shapes we already know. So I prepared a little exercise for you. And we will start with the C major 7 chord. And the first inversion. That means we will have the third on the bass for now. So in order to play this uh, one shape, I want you to put your second finger on the second fret, that's the note E on the fourth uh, string. Then I want you to place your fourth finger on the note B on the fourth fret on the third string. That's the major seventh of the chord. Now uh, we will play the root on the second string with the first finger, that's C. And the fifth we will play it on the first string, the note G on the third fret. So it sounds like this. It's a quite nice shape, I really love it. <laughs> so, what can we do with this? For starters, we know that the first string and the sixth string uh, are the same, so we can move our G to the bottom of the chord. So, we will play now the E on the fourth, the B, that's the major seven, on the fourth uh, fret, third string again, we will keep the C, but this uh, G note that we play over here, we will play it now on the 6th string. And now we have the second inversion of the major 7 chord in this position. So we have the 5th now on the bass, we have the 3rd, the 7th, and the root on the 2nd string. So with this one shape, we have now two voicings. So what else can we do with this? In the same position. For example, we could play this chord over another bass note. Uh, let's say A. Sounds really nice, right? But wait a moment, how can that be? We're playing C major 7 over an A. Well, almost every note from C major uh, is a note in the uh, A minor chord. For example, the E, that's the third from uh, C, is actually the fifth from A. So A, B, C, D, E, it's the fifth. So that note uh, would work. We have B. Well, B is the ninth from A, and the ninth is a note that sounds really good over minor chords. Look. It gives it a really, for me, sad uh, sound, but also very hip. Then we have the C on the second string, and that's the minor third of um, A, of A minor. Sounds kind of red for chili peppers, right? <laughs> so. And G is the minor seventh of A. So now we are playing actually an A minor seventh with a ninth or a A minor ninth chord. Sounds really cool. And remember that we started with our C major shape, right? In the same position. So what else can we do? Well, we could play it over another uh, bass note, uh, let's say E. Sounds really cool. Now, we haven't added uh, any new note, right? It's E. But because it is on the bottom, our ears tend to um, um, hear it like the, the root, like a new root. If we play it di directly like that. You see, that doesn't sound really major. Played alone like that, it sounds actually like a, a minor uh, chord with an added 6. The 6 is the C. You see, you have A that would be our new, new uh, root, 
the fifth would be B, now we have the sixth, and the minor third. What does that tell us? Well, that's, uh, that says uh, to us that we can, we can use one chord uh, for the other chord, we can replace uh, minor chords or certain minor chords with major seven chords. It depends how we play them and how the voicing. I mean, uh, that, that means the distribution of the notes is being played. Now with E minor. It sounds especially minor if we, we, we play, for example, the C a bit uh, later, for example. I love that sound. So with the same shape we have C major 7, if the bass player is playing C. <laughs> that would be the C. A, A minor 9th, and E minor 6. Oh, and C major with the, uh, the second inversion with the uh, bass on the uh, G. So we have now with one shape one, two, three, and four chords. These are in. <laughs> how you say it in English? Exchangeable. So if you're, for example, playing a solo, and the uh, and the chord, let's say, over your playing, it, um, it's an A minor. This means this C major seven chord uh, as an arpeggio should sound really cool. Like, you see, this was C major seven, C major seven, the fifth, the third, and the root. But over A minor. So that's a new sound, you see. Uh, this means also we could play that uh, E minor over that A minor. A minor arpeggio here. So actually, chords uh, gives us a lot of melodic possibilities too, if we understand how they work and how they interact with each other. Um, another thing you can do with this chord is uh, get another voicing for it. For example, we know that a major 7 chord is uh, 1, 3, 5 and major 7. So, the voices, if we play them uh, in, on one string, they keep this order always. So, if we have the 7th, major 7, Keep it in on the same string, uh, up one voice, it would uh, become uh, C, the root, the 1, and now comes the 3, the E, now comes the 5, see, and then major 7 again. And it goes like that all um, ac uh, across the fretboard. So, what can we do with this knowledge? Um, let us move each uh, of these, um, these voices up one note on each string. What I mean by this, if we are playing the E on this string, we keep it, we keep the note on this string, but we move to the next number or interval, or voice actually, from the chord. So if we are playing the third, now we should be playing the fifth. So this, mo this voice is mo moving into this one. Now we have the B on the third string, we move it, that's the major 7, so the major 7 goes to the root. Now we have these two uh, notes. So, the um, root, we have them on the second string. So the root moves uh, to the third, that would be E. So now we have G, C and E. And the last voice we had was on the first string, that was the fifth. And the fifth always moved to the seventh. So well, if you keep the direction. So, now we have this. 
That's another inversion of the court. Um, with inversion, we we mean that um, well, inversion means that um, we, which note we we have on the bass. So if if we have, for example, a C major seven, and we have the C on the bottom, the root on the bottom, that's no inversion. Then we invert it one time and we uh, put um, the third on the bass. That means we take the root and put it on a voice um, up on the voicing. That would be the first inversion, the third on the bass, and then, then go comes the second inversion. The second time you you um, <coughs> invert the chord, you get the fifth on the bass, and then you have another one if you're playing seven chords that the seven on the bass. But this, this is quite easy. You should memorize it uh, uh, anyway. So going back to the the new chord, uh, the new voicing for the same chord that we learned, we got this shape. And guess what? You can do the same thing with it with this one. So we will um, play the B, the major seven we have on the on the um, uh, first string. We can play it on the sixth string. See? So uh, a little detune, but it doesn't matter. We have that. Um, we can play the same chord over the A, of course. So now we have another voicing for A minor 9th. See? And over the E, of course. There are other options uh, you can explore over other um, uh, bass notes. Uh, but let's keep it simple for now. I will go further into the, um, this chord lessons um, in the future. So, we have now, look, C major, A minor 9th. E minor with a 6 or E minor 6 um, C major uh, second inversion oh I forgot the C major second inversion with this voicing so we have now C major A minor E minor C major uh, second inversion second inversion again third inversion would be that uh, A minor ninth with the ninth uh, on the top. Ah, sounds awesome. <laughs> and E minor six. This is quite useful, guys. Believe me. Don't make your life hard by knowing uh, a few chords. Explore chords. Um, another thing you can do with them is not playing them as chords at all. Uh, it's playing them as a um, kind of uh, pattern for your uh, licks. For example, if we're playing on uh, A minor, for example. <clears throat> and I know that uh, we can use C major 7 over that uh, A minor. Well, I'm, if I'm soloing, you could base your uh, phrases or motifs on these chords, you know, and the different inversions of C major, because you know now that C major 7 works perfectly over A minor, and it's actually very desirable to play because of that ninth. Uh, that sounds so awesome. So, I take this shape, for example. You see, you can make melodies out of them. I love this shape because it's easy to see the two fifths. And remember, when we phrase, um, the ear needs repetition in order to um, to recognize an idea behind the solo or, or, or sentences or licks. So I like this one because of the fifth, for example. So we have. I'll repeat. See, it makes sense. It's actually really nice. You can shred it however you want, but it's also really a good tip to keep these chord shapes also in your head. Not just uh, the scales uh, to play melodies, but also the chords. And they make nice arpeggios too. really nice. 
and of course you will move on and apply the same process uh, in order to get the other voices you can get out of this one and we have minor diminished half diminished everything so explore the chords start with this one memorize it memorize all the inversions you know go up and down and also study them over the other bass notes so that you can use them so as fast as that when you're improvising um, uh, comping so now you you know and you should know and you have already memorized the so C major can be the same as A minor 9 and E minor 13 or E minor 6 actually E minor uh, 6 I hope you liked the lesson if you liked what you saw uh, subscribe please and if you have questions uh, leave me an email I will gladly respond to any question you could have and see us the next time bye